Greetings, FBLA PBL. My name is Max Mitchell, and I serve as the 2017-2018 FBLA National President. Today, I have Michael Yaroshevsky as a guest here for an interview. He's the CEO and founder of RocketVisor, the world's first account collaboration suite built right into your browser. I'm so excited to talk to him about his FBLA PBL experiences, as well as how it has influenced him. Thank you, Michael, for joining us. And can you give us a brief little introduction to who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Max. Uh, it's great to be here. It's awesome that I just realized that you were 2017, 18, and I was 2007, uh, 2008 uh, FBLA national president. Uh, also, New Jersey state uh, president uh, at that time. Uh, and now I, uh, I founded a company here in New York uh, that is building a, a new generation of software uh, where we see people working more and more in the web browser. And so we're building a collaboration suite uh, based around the accounts that you might be working on uh, right into that browser. And so it's combining sort of technical uh, knowledge with my uh, background that I gained from FBLA. Interesting. And we'll, we're going to talk, uh, I'll be sure to talk more about that later on in the interview, but I want to first get started in um, how long have you been in FBLA PBL and what first inspired you to get involved? Yeah, I, I joined FBLA freshman year uh, of high school. I remember seeing the posters on the wall and we were being curious about it because I always knew that I wanted to be in entrepreneurship. Like in elementary school, I sold rock candy at lunch. I, uh, I loan sharked out pencils uh, in like fourth grade. Uh, in middle school, I had like a, a website that people could be members of to play like uh, flash games back when that was the thing. Um, and getting to high school, I was like, you know, I wanted to do something that would further my, uh, my career towards being an entrepreneur. And FBLA seemed like the perfect fit for that. I had no idea what it was. Um, but I gave it a shot, and uh, uh, <laughs> it, it, it went pretty quick, actually. I started out um, just being a member, and because I had some technical knowledge, um, I ended up getting into a position where I applied to be the state webmaster uh, for New Jersey, and uh, I, I did that, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, it was great to be part of the state officer team, uh, to go through all the training. I, I, can't, I, I can't speak highly enough of the training that I got from the state officer training, um, the conferences, and how that's helped me uh, today. So I was a member for all four years, uh, becoming eventually state president and national president senior year. Interesting. And um, how has FBLA influenced your college and career decisions? Can you tell us a little bit more about your background? Mm -hmm. so about my decisions? Um, you know, I think it just it, it gave me a confidence to pursue what I wanted to. You know, it, it gave me a level of, um, of understanding of sort of the business world that I wouldn't have been able to achieve just through the classroom alone. Uh, and as a result of that, when I sort of, you know, became, you know, more adult and went to college and ultimately graduated, had my first job, uh, there, I just felt more natural uh, in that setting because of all the experience uh, that I had from the, you know, the hard and fast skills uh, all the way down to the soft skills of, uh, you know, just being able to present myself well in a, in a business setting. And I think all of those things combined and, you know, from public speaking to, uh, you know, even just etiquette at a dinner, you know, the, the simplest things all put together this package of a person that enables you to achieve that next level uh, of career growth. Awesome. Uh, that's so interesting to hear. Uh, what kind of, you know, as a member of FBLA, what kind of benefits did you get? Whether I think you mentioned conferences was one of them, but some other benefits that have led you to develop as a leader, what were some of them? So I'll definitely start with competitive events. Uh, it was a, a big part for me as well. Um, I typically uh, tended to, to compete in the ones related to technology and computers and the ability to, to have an opportunity to learn about things that I otherwise wouldn't have learned about, to challenge myself. That was, that was fantastically uh, useful, and I, I still leverage some of those things I learned uh, today. Um, the other big part early was just the opportunity to experiment with different forms and styles of leadership uh, through the various teams that I was fortunate enough to uh, you know, serve on. Uh, so from the local chapter to the state chapter to the national chapter, uh, you know, being able, in like the position you're in now, uh, where as a, you know, a high schooler, you are learning how to set a program of work uh, and you know, set goals. Uh, you know, maybe it's not a program of work that we're setting here at our company, but we still have goals and we still go on uh, trainings. 
Um, one of the things that I took uh, away is, you know, how FBLA with state officer training, you know, they're kind of like little retreats. Uh, I really like the idea of taking your team on a retreat. Uh, I think that's, a, you know, to get out of wherever you are and, and really work together. And so it was just, you know, working with people, studying for the competitive events, the soft skills like the public speaking opportunities. Um, it, it just all created this, this package of, of me. I mean, it built up my portfolio of, of knowledge and, and competence. Awesome. And you mentioned that you served as national president exactly 10 years ago from 2007 to 2008. Uh, what, would you, what are some things that you would tell people who are interested in running um, and uh, how would you encourage them to run and what would you tell them about your experience as a national officer? It was, it, you know, I'll, I'll take it all the way back to the National Leadership Conference in 2005 in, I believe it was uh, in Florida. And I remember I was in the furthest part of that auditorium in the back. And I looked up on the stage and I said, oh my God, those people up there, those national officers, who are they? And how on earth do they get to be national officers of this awesome organization? And I thought for a moment that they must have just been like gods, you know? And I was like, that's unbelievable. And through, I, I was fortunate in that opportunities kind of came to me uh, or I made opportunities and, you know, through starting out as being the webmaster for the state, opened up the door to become uh, president for the state of New Jersey after that. And I, you know, got exposed. So I, I think what FBLA and the officer opportunities taught me was that you use every step to take you to that next step. So, you know, no matter what position you start in, it doesn't matter whether you're a webmaster or secretary or historian, you use that uh, to, to be able to launch you, uh, you know, to your next step. And so that's really what I think, that was my, my first memory of, you know, national officership was at uh, NFL 2005. Uh, and lo and behold, 2008, I was up on that stage. And I will tell you, I was fired up, uh, you know, sort of being the MC. Uh, for, for the ceremonies is unbelievable experience and I, I don't regret it at, at all. And uh, obviously you agreed to, uh, to this interview, but why do you think it's important to share your story 10 years on? I think that if I, I wish I had seen more people that sort of started out where I was and had gone on to do the things that I wanted to do because it would probably made me feel a little bit more confident even back then about my ability to do the same things. Uh, I think that's important, being able to relate to people that are in the positions that you want. So for people that, you know, want to be entrepreneurs uh, and are wondering if they're doing the right things to, to get there, I can say that by being a member of FBLA, you're, you're on the right track. Uh, the main thing is whether you challenge yourself. Uh, I used to joke that FBLA is like a vending machine. You know, you put, you put in and you get out. And so it's not just enough to, you know, put it on your resume. Uh, you got to show up to the meetings. You got to get involved challenge yourself, go to the competitive events, you know, run for office. You know, it was crazy. Like there had, I don't think there had ever been a national president uh, from the great state of New Jersey. Uh, and, you know, and there hadn't been a national officer for a couple of years in New Jersey. And I was like, you know, what? throw, you know, throw everything out the door. Let's, let's give it a shot. Uh, and so taking, you know, learning to take those risks. So I, I hope that, you know, for that person at the NLC this year, who's in the far back of the audience, that hopefully they'll see this video and say, you know what, I can do that. Uh, if I just try and work really hard. Interesting. Now, uh, I kind of want to shift into your current role uh, as an entrepreneur. Um, and you mentioned that you're the CEO and founder of Rock Advisor. What influenced you to go down that path as an entrepreneur? That's a deep question. Um, there are a lot of drivers there. I would say deep down, I love to build things that make people's lives better. Um, and it's funny because you can take that in two directions. It's partly about the products that we build, but it's also about the experiences that we can deliver to everybody who's involved along the way, including you know, the team and the shareholders. And you know, there's, there's a whole community around every company and every product. And it's just so exciting for me to be able to cultivate something where we, you know, we're building a product that's helping people. We're building a, a company with a culture uh, you know, that's, that's sort of a, a unique way that we want it to be. Um, and so for me, it, it's, it's great to be able to sort of, you know, see the results of, of, of efforts every day, you know, little by little building up. It's kind of like you know, I used to like to, um, back before I was an entrepreneur, on my weekends, I remember I would go like build stuff in my parents' backyard. 
um, you know, like this rock wall. And I just love the feeling of you know, every stone that you added, you, you built something. And that idea of building something, but, you know, as a company, uh, I think sort of, you know, comes through to, and, and takes that to, uh, you know, the, the next level for me where I can leverage my skills, you know, not necessarily – uh, cut out for like, you know, uh, masonry work, uh, by any means, but, uh, I definitely know a thing or two, you know, about technology and business and being able to leverage those strengths rather than, you know, muscular strengths, uh, to, to build things is, is what I always kind of saw as my calling. Interesting. So what are some of the most challenging aspects of your position and how has FBA like prepared you to handle those, ad- those challenges? So a massive part of it is, um, around sort of leadership, you know, capital L leadership. You know, it's like Hamden Forkner's definition. It's about, uh, it's not about leading other people, it's about getting them to lead themselves. Uh, and I, that was one of the most impactful quotes to me. Uh, you know, Dr. Forkner, and, and it took me a while to get that. I remember uh, as a freshman and sophomore, like writing it down or like filling it in as like the answer to quiz questions. But um, as I grew up, I started to realize that, you know, leadership is not about dragging people along. It's about you know pointing ahead and saying look this is this is what we can accomplish this is where we can go and you know believing in them and giving them the the opportunities and the confidence in themselves to 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 go do that and so uh, you know for me that was that was one of those um, you know big parts that that I think FBLA helped me in in the challenges that I face today so so that capital L leadership of setting a place where we're going to go and trying to figure out like what are the stumbling blocks along the way, forming a, you know, the equivalent of a program of work. You know, for us, we have this 12 month calendar of the things that we want to execute on and keeping everybody, you know, aligned towards those goals and, you know, finding the opportunities where, you know, somebody needs a little bit of help. Um, it's really about, you know, setting everybody up to success and getting out of the way. That's what capital L leadership to me is about. Interesting. Now, uh, what are some tips that you would give to, you know, if you were able to talk to yourself as a freshman in high school again, what are some tips that you'd give to yourself as a brand new FBLA member uh, moving into this kind of field? I would probably give myself the advice to like like pick pick a couple of things in school uh, extracurricularly that really matter to me. Um, And ideally FBLA being one of them and just really go headlong into that. I think one of the factors that contributed to my ability to kind of see through these dreams that I had was that I, didn't, I, I definitely was, was involved in, in many things in high school, but there were a handful of things that I, I was incredibly passionate about. Uh, one was FBLA and another was music. I, you know, I was super involved in, in chorus all through high school. And I just, I threw myself into those things, you know, taking every challenge I could, you know, really being passionate, trying to be the best I could be at each of those things. And I think that pays off. You know, people around you will notice that you're striving for something. And, you know, everybody wants, just like we have superhero stories in our culture, everybody wants to believe in, you know, the success, uh, the successful potential of other people to achieve great things. It's, you know, nowhere more so, I think, than in schools, when you have fantastic teachers and advisors and administrators in the schools. So to show them that you're on a mission, they'll support you. Uh, and so work hard, people will notice, good things will come to you, uh, and you know, keep going. Have, have an idea of where you want to go, and, and if you keep working towards it, you'll get there. And there will be, there will be failures along the way, um, and you know, bear that in mind, and that's okay. Interesting. Um, and so as someone who has been involved in startups and uh, you know, been in, has been in the business field, what are some tips that you'd give members who are unsure of what exactly they want to pursue but still want to make an impact on the world? they're unsure of what they want to pursue, but they still want to make an impact. Hmm. So you might not know what you want to pursue, but chances are good that you have a good idea of when you're in, you know, what I would call like your flow. Like when you're really achieving something and you're you're working and you don't even really realize you're working. Um, You know, if you could find those things in life that you would, that you're basically do, in your spare time or you do without really realizing the time passing um, and, you know, pursue that and become an expert at that, um, that, that will lead you ideally down a path where you'll find opportunities. You know, if you're an expert at something, people will come to you, right? You don't necessarily have to have know every step. You don't have to lay every stone in your path. If you are competent 
you're a hard worker, you have high integrity, so people trust you, they want to work with you, um, you know, good things will gravitate towards you. So, you know, don't be anxious about it. Just do your best um, and, and have all of those qualities. And generally speaking, the path sort of lays itself just as necessary. The, you know, the stones fall down in your path just as you're about to make that step. You just have to be willing to, to put your foot out in front and, and be confident that that stone will be there when you put your foot down. All right. And uh, I do have a couple more questions. Uh, what are some uh, pieces of advice you would give to a senior in college at, uh, who's in PBL who um, is getting ready to graduate and go into the real world? I'd say your first job matters a lot, a ton. Um, you know, being able to uh, work really hard, set a great, this is your first real work impression. Like everything, everything at every point matters, but there are definitely some pivotal moments in your academic and, and professional careers where the amount of effort you put in has a disproportionate impact on your potential outcome. Um, I think in, in your professional career, that matters especially early on because once again if you gain a reputation for being a highly competent um, highly uh, driven motivated passionate aggressive positive person um, things will start to gravitate to you uh, and so you know as you graduate college it you know more responsibility of course um, but don't let up you know it's not party time uh, by any means uh, the whole idea is, is you know to, to get a lot of work done while you're early uh, so you can, uh, you know, have a fulfilling career. And do you have any, like, interesting or fun stories that you'd like to share about your time as FBLA national president? <sighs> oh, my God. I will say that <laughs> I was uh, tra traveling, just so much travel. I, I, I loved meeting all of the different chapters. It just, it gave me such a deep love for our our country and the, the, the fact that we share, despite all the states and, and different backgrounds we come from, um, all of the different chapters I got to visit for their conferences uh, really taught me something about hospitality, about how, you know, no matter where we come from, we, we all share a certain drive to succeed, uh, how we all are, are fundamentally, uh, you know, eager to help each other. Um, that, I think, being able to get out of my classroom in my hometown of Wayne, New Jersey, and get that, you know, the heck out there to, you know, South Carolina or Nevada or wherever it was, um, and learn how to say Nevada properly. Uh, you know, those are the things that, that I, I, I remember, but the, the people. Honestly, it was all about the people that I met, the experiences we had. Um, I, will, I will never forget that. All right. Well, I saved the hardest question for last, and that is, how would you describe FBLA PBL in one word? Whoa. Um, how would I describe FBLA PBL in one word? So the word that comes to my mind, I don't know whether this is poetic by any means, but it's just preparation. It is one of the best forms of preparation uh, that you can have for you know, a future successful career. So I think I'm going to stick with that one. Uh, there's probably, you know, uh, you know, uh, louder charging words that I could have used there, but, but really, um, if I think on where I am today and where I was before I was in FBLA, I will say that the, all that travel, being able to, to travel by myself, being able to learn how to set an agenda and lead teams, being able to deal with interpersonal issues on teams, being able to tie a tie. Uh, I remember from state officer training, the, the trivia game where we, I kept getting it wrong. Vichy Swa is cold potato soup. Preparation, if I'm ever at a business meeting and they ask me, would I like Vichy Swa? The answer is, it's actually delicious. The answer will be yes. And that is the preparation that I got uh, from, from FBLA is, you know, the little tidbits, the soft things, the hard skills, the people, you know, I've networked all, all around the country now from people that I met. So preparation for your future. Well, well, thank you for sharing your story with us. Uh, Michael, Michael Yaroshevsky is the CEO and founder of Rock Advisor, the world's first account collaboration suite built right into your browser. Again, he served as the FBLA national president from 2007 to 2008. And uh, again, thank you, Michael, for sharing so much of your wisdom with us. And we hope that we uh, will see you in the near future. My pleasure.